I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man is suck. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. Edward, What's hello. Up, How We're are back you? back again. I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Uh, we have a very special guest. Not only do we have connections within the comedy industry, being on tour, the same kind of tours, but also he's a super funny comedian, the one and only Ben Kirschenbaum. Ben, what is your worst day job? Okay, worst day job, I think, worked at an ice cream shop. I must have been Ooh. 18, maybe right after freshman year of college. So not a Cold Stone. It was not Cold Stone. No, no, no. That would have been way worse when you have to yeah. sing and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. God. No, oh, no, no, do no, they no. sing in a Cold Stone? Oh, you could pay them to sing. Oh. And like the real douchebags put in like a nickel just because uh, they, yeah. I guess there's no Especially minimum. Especially in like a, su- where are you from originally? I'm from New York City, but oh, there, there oh, were a few. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, because like suburban guy, I had a suburban Cold Stone. Right. Where guys would do that. They would drop the nickel and make people. Ugh. Awful. Especially if they're your buddies and they know like you work there. So there was a Johnny Rockets in South Philly where I, I was like, I lived in South Philly for like six years. And they had a Johnny Rockets where it was all like actors that would sing. Well, that's and dance. different. That was a whole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Like... These were not pros. <laughs> 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 were... Was... Goldstones, I remember. At least the ones I would go to were. Uh... I dated a girl that had a wrist problem at like 17 because she worked at Coldstone and they make you throw it on the slab. The, the cold stone. Oh, right. And you got to like mix it and chop it. And there was one time where she like couldn't give a hand job to me because. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I didn't work at gold stone. Let me tell you. That would have been. You're 17. The hand job is yeah. all you're getting. So it was like. <laughs> Ben's like, that was my side job. <laughs> New York City, man. Do the rent high. I don't know what to tell you. Everyone's got to work. <laughs> All right, so uh, ice cream parlor. Yes, and like it a was, mom and pop one. Uh, yep. It was it was right nearby and right near my apartment. And some of it was cool. It was like a baseball themed. It was called Last Licks. It was a baseball themed thing. And I got to. They would have sometimes like old baseball players come in. They had. Oh. I met Dwight Gooden. Oh, that was whoa. awesome. Um, Where's the cocaine? Fuck <laughs> <laughs> this ice cream. <laughs> Daryl, get in here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he was very nice. <laughs> um, uh, so all that was great, um, but just the slog. I mean, it's just a bad job. I mean, just digging ice cream for eight hours. The shifts were pretty long, and they would. It was also one of those, and I, I know this is true for so many jobs, but it was like. They took it. To, there were meetings. Uh, what? Like they took it so seriously. It's like, yeah. what are we gonna talk and what, about? What's discussed in the meetings? Like where to put the right spoon in the right hot water? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Scooping techniques. I don't even know. Yeah. I mean, it, they get five tastes. So I see some of you guys it, out there getting yeah. like eight, nine tastes. They get five tastes. That's all it. that. <laughs> it was. It was all that. We've noticed that you know a few of you you know are not really sponsoring the Rocky Road. I don't know. I don't even know what they were talking about. <laughs> the Rocky Road. The Rocky Road's been here since two years. Yeah, yeah, these are uneven. Yeah. Rocky Rocky. Hey, what's, that's a good point because I was on the Salt and Straw train for a long time because I was going to LA a lot. Salt and, salt straw. and straw is um, this like artesian ice cream shop that I believe started in like uh, Portland and then they moved down to LA and then now they've expanded. But before they expanded, they only had like two or three locations, but they were very much on that forefront of Instagram. Being, you know, Instagram now, you could have a restaurant be famous from like, we threw Captain Crunch on top of this pancake right, and now yeah, we're famous, yeah. right? Yeah, we're deep but, frying twinkies. Yeah, 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 but I'm always idea. intrigued. Like, what's the grossest part of ice cream? Because it goes... Does it go bad, or is it like free, like freezer burn or some shit on it? I don't know. I think it was more the frozen yogurt that would start looking all weird oh, okay. if it wasn't. I mean, obviously, if it's not like frozen and all that stuff, you know, and that that would be, you know, I, I think there were a couple times. I was here. Here's the reason why I didn't like it, other than just scooping all day. I was really bad at it. How are you like, bad at scooping ice cream? Though? Like. I don't know, but I somehow managed. Was, I was it like the taking orders? Was it the like people saying things and then listening okay, to them? Okay, that was awful. Yeah, I couldn't retain that, anything. I, honestly, yeah, yeah, I have a hard time with that. I'm like, because I have my own shit running through my head. And 100%. I'm, like, I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, yeah. vanilla? <laughs> Dude, all the people that like they post on, you know, Facebook or Instagram when someone at Starbucks gets their name wrong, like how it's like they have a million things yeah, going on. Also, care. you're a nobody. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, who are you? Why are you so They're remembering by this? Leonardo DiCaprio's name. I'll tell you. 
tell you that much. You haven't done anything. That's why they're not remembering your name. John, you're a no-name scumbag piece of shit. No one knows your name. No one wants to know your name. You're Job from here on out. Every time you come in here, you're a Job. <laughs> what, but what's okay? Someone comes in. Is, is there a lot of specials? Is there a lot of specialty ice cream? No, it's it's on paper an incredibly easy job. <laughs> You're a smart dude. I'm like trying to piece together for the show. Well, in terms of, okay, so aesthetics, right? So frozen yogurt in particular to get a swirl, which is not that hard. I was I was awful. It would be lopsided. Oh, I would have, is that from the, you mean? From yeah, the, you exactly. Got, if so you, you want to mix the vanilla chocolate and just do. So but, you got the ones where you're scooping it out of the tub. Yes. Right? And then you yeah. got the soft serves. They had both. Uh-huh. Um, exactly. And, and then frozen yogurt's like a soft serve I think kind of d- just when I would give it to someone, listen, the ice cream tastes good, you know, no matter how it looks, but it was just just not aesthetically pleasing. The I mean, presentation's just, a yeah. part of the gig. Yes, yes. You're supposed it's to be the a only thing. It, that's all I'm responsible for. I'm not <laughs> making make the ice cream. Just yeah. make it look nice. That's yeah. all you got to do. So I sucked at that. Um, and, it, like, relatives would come in. And, you know, they were like, oh, you know, my cousin's, you know, scooping the ice cream. And they would be like, this is awful. Like, what? you're, like, bad at something it's impossible and, hey, to be bad wearing? at. what are you like, this tall, like, Jewish guy. Did they put you in one of those dopey hats and, like, a... I think I had to wear a hat, yes. Definitely an out- definitely a shirt and stuff like that. <laughs> That's um, not too bad. I was like picturing yeah. you in like the <laughs> like a paper hat and the, it wasn't like too bad. <laughs> yeah. all like young and tall and like not into your like grown under your body yet. Yeah. <laughs> and your Jewish cousins coming in just fucking yeah, yeah you. These are fucking <laughs> lawyers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Three year in pre med. <laughs> they're all pre-med. <laughs> they're pre med and they're sixteen somehow. <laughs> they're like yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So th- there was that. But I mean, some of the perks were. I, th- I think. It was the meetings part that I was like, "This is just yeah a good and it, and I think a good lesson for how a lot of day jobs work, where it's just hours of useless. It's just all the other little yeah yeah right 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 yeah. It's like I'm not even if you were making sixty thousand dollars a year, those meetings are like not important. Right? I, yeah. It's funny you bring this up because I work in offices. Like that's what I do. I'm the office guy of the working class holes. He's the restaurant service guy of working class holes. Okay. And I've always worked low level, entry level office jobs, you know, secretary work, that kind of stuff. And there's always a secretary in the group that wants to set herself apart. It's, I'm always the only guy from the rest and call a meeting, a monthly meeting where it's just me and 10 50 year old ladies. And they're all just talking just about secretaries. Well, yeah. Because they want to make themselves more important. Of course. Uh, and yeah. it's an important job. But it is not one of those jobs where a meeting is ever necessary. Everything can be handled via email or via a note or a, a one-off Word document sheet with how to do things. You don't need a monthly, weekly meeting. No. To t- but it's more like... Hi, I'm a head secretary here, and I'm gathering everybody for this micromanaging meeting. And I used to feel that way when I worked shitty jobs like Blockbuster that I've brought up a bunch now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or any like any job where it's like, dude, I just want to clock in. and We don't need this. I, I, you you could have told me this through in passing. We Searching didn't need to for gather. problems. Searching Because they for, make you come yeah. in off exactly shift. What it is, yeah. They make you come in off shift for some of those jobs, oh, for those meetings. Yeah. Right? Like I remember like, oh, so we have a staff meeting. Well, I'm not scheduled that day. Sorry, you got to show up. We'll pay you your hourly. Like I'd rather not be paid yeah. the hourly so I can have whole, my day. You got to spend all of your like commute, everything for everything. one hour. For one work. hour meeting. Yeah, so yeah. some dipshit middle manager yeah. can feel important. Yeah. Yeah. Also, they go on for way longer than they need to be. Yeah, I always do wonder. I think it probably depends on the person, but the people that are running those meetings, they've got to know. Like as they're yeah. speaking, they've got to know what, that what they're saying is garbage. Like is is just <laughs> it's useless. It's useless. I mean, it's just it's just a mouth exercise. I mean, it's nothing. I think it's a lot of lonely when you get when it's that low level. It's a lot of lonely yeah. people that want to feel important. I worked in an office, and we used to have a, a fire safety uh, thing every year. And this guy, it was kind of amazing because yes. he he would do, he was like one of those guys that talks like with his eyes closed, you know? <laughs> like Fernando Valenzuela's pitches. Yeah, like he's just he's just always leaning back. His eyes it's are a great closed. '80s baseball thing we got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right over my head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I figured he might have shown up to the ice cream shop. We're gonna name every <laughs> NL Cy Young <laughs> of, the, of the 1980s. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> the oil or Scheiser. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was just trying to think. <laughs> Brett Saber? No, maybe it was AL. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> oil or Scheiser for sure. had one in 81. Yeah. <laughs> I can go on forever. I have like an autism with yeah, like baseball Yeah, this is guys. great. Yeah, I do Sporkle all day. I mean, that's literally, yeah. Wait, what's Sporkle? It's like a list website where it's stuff like this, like, you know, all the Cy Youngs, all the uh, best, you know, pictures, all the countries is one. Is it a competition? Like an like a thing where oh, you're just like with a wordle? It's a, it's a solitary <laughs> exercise. Just when you're not getting any pussy. <laughs> Listen. It should be called nopussy.com. That's where I've been going. Just a second ago, I judged the people who ran those meetings. I'm one. I, I get that. <laughs> At least you do a solitude meeting. You're having your own meeting. I'm doing it by myself. <laughs> yes, I am not <laughs> subjecting anyone else yeah, to I'm it. I'm not bringing 50 guys with me. <laughs> uh, but this fire safety guy, oh my God, man. And it was verbatim. I'm like, dude, he, like his inflection, I was like, oh, dude, I remember this from last year. Like he's been doing the same oh, yeah, thing. He- he had it down pat and it was like like i like almost like you could time it it's like this is going to be 36 minutes long <laughs> i remember opening for this old ass comedian i'm not going to say his name but uh when i first started stand up and he he was really big in the 80s he was huge in the 80s and his act didn't change it was like 2003 or 4 and every year i'd have to i don't know why i think he asked me to open for him he liked the transition i guess um, but it was the same thing. I could hear his cadence. It was like, oh, and it yeah. was like he would hit a button, and that was it. It's like a tape. There was no variation. Yeah, yeah no yeah. diverting to a different. Mm-hmm. It was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was Nolan Ryan. Oh. <laughs> 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 that guy was oil can boy. <laughs> What I love about the fire safety thing is that I'm also picturing if he's got to fill in a certain amount of time that he's just throwing out hypotheticals yeah. that are just never. Yeah, we have, we're a lot at 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. It's just, you know, what if I come in to save the fire, but then my Dalmatian also gets on, and it's like, what are we? If a baby were to catch on fire, <laughs> it leads back. It's just, yeah. What you like, would want to do is... It's like when you haven't done 30 or 45 in a while, and you're like, I'm missing a whole yeah. portion of my act, yeah. like you just start filling in the blanks. <laughs> Questions? So, uh, Any qu- <laughs> yeah, flame retardant, not a real thing. Like it's, <laughs> or he just starts doing stand up. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot too, I think. <laughs> Where people just. <laughs> so you hated the job solely because of the meetings and the not being great at it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that feeling of incompetence is just an awful yeah. feeling. It doesn't matter what the job is. And now, was this your first job? You were young, right? Uh, the- uh, other than like a camp counselor. Yeah, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was your first taste of like, oh, jobs. Showing up. Jobs yes. suck. Yeah. Some of the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then, is- yeah, and some, uh, yeah, some themes that I think would show up over and over. It, it was informative, you know, mm-hmm. but, yeah. uh, but I, uh, yeah, I hated it. Yeah, it's funny, like, when you realize, because when you first get a job, like, as a like a teenager, you're like, oh, dude, I'm going to get money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, dude, I'm going to be able to buy shit. Yeah. This is going to be awesome. And well, then when uh, that hits you of, like, I'm required sucks. to be here, it's always, like, within three weeks. Yeah. It's always, you're yeah. like, this is this wasn't a great decision. It's quick. Yeah. Me having to do this is yeah. not great. But, I, okay, so ice cream shop, summertime, New York City, women, would ha- girls would have to show up. Yeah, you know, the outfit didn't help. I think it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they weren't Try. creaming for the old Big Ben and the uh, ice cream hat. I also am the kind of guy where, like, a fucking, you know, really hot woman would walk in and I'd be like, oh, hey, oh, Dwight Good, holy shit. <laughs> Move, bitch. Yeah. Dwight. Mookie, Mookie Wilson. <laughs> Guys, you're my favorite first base coach. <laughs> <laughs> Mookie, <laughs> that's amazing. Like I'm not interested. In yes, <laughs> short crop top shirts you're wearing. I, I I I want a guy with a fucking flamethrower for a right arm. She's like, can I try a rocky road? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was bad at it. That's why I was all lopsided. I was just waiting for the next 1986 med play. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get the kid in here, uh, Gary Carter, at any point? Because that's what I would really want. A little Gary Carter action. Uh, what Have you ever dated anyone at the job? At that job? Any oh, job. at any job. Uh, no, other than, I mean, if you consider comedy, I went on like a couple uh, dates with something. But no, not really. Not your not your bag. No. You've been fired. Uh, have I been fired? Yes. Well, okay, so I tutor. Um, so 
a lot of a lot of the tutoring I do sometimes it's with a company, but sometimes it's private tutoring. So mm-hmm. I've been fired from. A, you know, a, a given student. You know, so I have some questions about the tutor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, away. that's the main gig that I do. Other than uh, oh, that's your main gig. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So now, uh, when you first started tutoring, uh, what was your like repartee? You had like no real credits. How do you get like a gig? Just you know, the college you went to, the GPA, uh-huh. and like you know, I volunteered to do something in college. So the, oh, at, the first thing I did was sort of after school. I lived in Chicago. I did some like after school program tutoring. It was like a whole comprehensive after school thing with like sports and uh, sex ed and all this stuff. But I was the the educational part. So you would go to the school for that. I would go to the school. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. Okay. Man, High I've- school. They were more middle school, a okay. little bit of high school, yeah. yeah but like a, yeah, it was like a, a seven, eight, nine kind of thing, something like that. Middle school, some di- different yeah. areas have like different middle schools, yeah. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah I've been exactly. watching lately uh, on my Twitter as I, I sometimes I'll smoke weed and just go through like the re- recommended videos. And because I like to watch street fight videos, I think they're f- kind of funny, uh, disturbing and funny. I'm, I'm also very <laughs> fucked up. Uh, they'll show quite a few like teachers getting hit. Oh yeah, I don't know, dude. I'm hitting you. Like I know I'm gonna go to jail, but I'm hitting you. If you're yeah. if you're a teenager and you're in my face, I am laying you the fuck out. Just no. That's why I could never be a teacher. No, because these, especially nowadays, where because all the kids have their phones out, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're filming like, and it's you know I remember being a dipshit. I'm like we're probably discussing like I fuck can't stand that blah blah chemistry teacher he says one more thing to me like i'm gonna say something and now this guy's like i'm gonna try to check the teacher and he one kid threw like a like a compass the sharp end at the Ooh. teach like just wow. wild wow. wild aggressive shit yeah. Yeah, yeah, did yeah. you encounter that when you were i definitely i i feel like i'm pretty patient but i've definitely i've, I've raised my voice pr- of course pr- a, a bunch um there were also some times where i was like I would mainly be teaching like math and and that kind of stuff, but like the gym teacher or someone who was running the sports thing would step out, so I would take over for a little bit. And while they're playing sports and like getting all that aggression out, that's when they're at their fucking worst. Uh, I mean, they won't listen to shit because it's like it's their recess or whatever, so they feel like this is the time where I don't have to follow any rules. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and you're not the regular guy. I'm not the regular guy. That also hurts when you're not the you're not the main. They've seen me shoot a basketball. They have no respect for me, (laughs) so it's not. (laughs) That doesn't help. Like you walk in because you're you're tall guy. I'm not coordinated. Like like you walk in, they're like, oh okay, and then they see a little bit. You try to do a layup, yeah, hitting the rim. That's exactly right. (laughs) That was the no, because you're right. I should have just never done it. I should have left the mystery. Exactly. That's that's a great point. (laughs) Yeah. Something. My knee. I blew out my knee in in college. Yeah. Yeah. College. Play a little college ball and I blew this knee out. Yeah, Dwight Gooden was a, a was one of my tutors, my mentors. <laughs> Dwight Gooden when I was in high school. I really like some yeah. rum raisin. <laughs> that was a good rum raisin. It's Dwight Gooden. I have a son different now. sport, but he, it was more the sport psychology. He would get me into yeah. the guy of the tiger. Uh, yeah. It's hard to explain. Yeah, yeah. I have a son now, and I'm always considering, you know, the patient's part of understanding sure. what a kid's going through yeah. and what's going on, but it. It looks as they get to be 14, 15, 16, it's starting to look, you know, you need someone to really either slap the shit out of oh, you yeah. Yeah. or something bad has to happen to you for you to chill out. And I hate that that's, a, that that's just the way my mind works, but I would assume that that's something you're like, this guy's going to be awful. He's going to be awful. Yeah, there's no saving. Yeah, exactly. And also, and of course, as they get older, you know, fine, they're not adults, but it's like, yeah, you're enough of an adult to take responsibility for the fact that you're being a dick. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, Why do you stay? Why, like, is that job just because it's like a flexibility situation? You're the first tutor we've ever had on. So. You're the first educator we've ever had on the show. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Amazing for scheduling with stand up yeah. and with tutoring it's one on one which is is easier oh yeah oh, like sure. by by far i mean Plus it's an you're, intense you're in their home most of the time too right? usually we i go yeah. there yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah 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 but back in high school like uh that was more of a group session when you were going that to was school? usually like five or six kids five usually six like kids. small groups so uh-huh. again i i can't imagine how teachers do i mean it's oh, i want i ran an sat class for like a month or two months where it was like, you know, 20 11th graders and that I mean, they weren't bad kids, but Ugh. it it is a little like stand up where it's like you almost prefer 
the shouting out than just the complete disinterest. Sure. I mean, people just yeah. staring at their phones while I'm like, you know, I prepared this shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You gotta, like, went over the room, the whole thing, right? And at least yeah. if they're yeah. shouting out, they're making... You can counter. Yes. There is no counter to silence. Yeah, 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 exactly. You can't just keep getting louder and expect them to answer you right. when they're not interested. At least if they're yelling, it means they're investing somewhat Somewhat in engaged. The they're just screaming out like, no, that's not the Pythagorean theorem. It's like, well, it is. <laughs> I, 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 you're wrong, but I appreciate that you at least know that that's what we're talking about. <laughs> You've got to reward it a little bit. Like the the fact that they, they even engaged. Yeah, they care. Yeah, you a, li- a little bit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's wild. I, don't, I could never fucking do so that. So it's man. flexibility, and you must like coaching in some way, shape, or form. I I like math, and that's the main thing that I tutor. Oh, okay. Um, And I do like working in that environment. I do like working with kids. I, I find I mean, them. It must be rewarding seeing someone do something that they couldn't do because of you. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that, he got it. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, even from a small side as a parent, I, I see that we're like, oh, he's getting it. That's that's mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. pretty rewarding. And the idea of you know math in particular, people just hate math. They have awful memories of it. Mm-hmm. And to be able to, if I'm doing my job right, to be able to present it in a way that's not as painful. Um, also to help, I, the thing that I like about math is that and I think that it's a thing that people dislike, is that you're going to hit a roadblock no matter what. I mean, yeah. even the greatest mathematicians in the world, they hit a roadblock just at a higher level, mm-hmm. but they hit a roadblock. Yeah. So that ability to stick with a problem, stay patient, not get anxious, not freak out, if I can help a kid with that, I feel like, you, yeah, I'm actually helping them with like It's life. an overall. Yeah, yeah, it's a life help, right? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Do you apply that to your stand-up? Do you find yourself being formulaic because you love math so much? Yeah, sometimes. You do, right? <laughs> I, I hope that it doesn't show in the actual stand-up, but when I go home you know, with a notebook, like, yeah, it's, it's like getting pretty... you have pretty... a process, you have like a, a chart, if you will, some kind of like situations in front of you. I think it's how my brain works a little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does it work? I don't know. You've seen my eyes. <laughs> You're funny. But I'm saying, like, for you, is it? <laughs> How the fuck do I know? <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, high school <laughs> out. It totally depends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Doing geometry, yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> You're the one in the back just going fucking nerd. <laughs> this, this guy. That was more about the cosine. <laughs> when a lady's throwing up in her sweater at a brewery, I don't know if, it's, if the Pythagorean theorem is coming into effect. <laughs> you see my act. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. I just love how our pro, like it, your personality finds its way into your act even it has if to. even for comedians that are so anti talking about themselves their personality is there if you're looking hard enough it's like you see Jim Gaffigan's personality totally even oh, early on in his career like oh that, I see his personality even though there's nothing really there he's talking about that's like about his real real life uh but I feel like math and being a math person would affect like okay if two plus two is four why is the why are these jokes not working? Did right. you ever run into that? You're like, how could this not have worked? Oh, of course. And then and then the reverse happens all the time, where you say something that was a throwaway line or that wasn't supposed to laugh, and it's like, what is? Yeah, that's not part of the, that. That was right. You chaos. guys are. <laughs> and I start yelling at the audience. You guys are fucking. Because your brain is mathematical, and that's yeah. the one thing about math is math is there is no maybes with math. Yeah. It's either wrong or it's right. So I could see in the beginnings of a stand up career, you're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. This should not have worked, or this should have worked. I can yeah. see that being like a torturous but thing. But here's for you. the thing: I'm going to jump in on the math here a little bit because oh, you're an engineer a, major. Here's the thing so about you math, know though: like bit. you can describe just about anything mathematically, right? Like you can get, like you can go, like you can take a wider view of it, and you're like, oh, like the, oh, it worked because of the dip. You know what I mean? It's like there's, it's all like. So curves. you're saying like if you, you know all the variables, like when you get into calculus stuff, it's all like just. You know, it's just it's all about the curves, the dips, the highs and the lows and stuff like that. I, I'm I don't really know enough to have like a mathematical concept, but like cause just conversationally. Sure. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's not algebra is like everything's linear. Mm-hmm. But then when you get calculus is more like every, nothing is linear. It's all just curves. Ben, right. The you other agree? I, I agree. And then the other argument I would make is that for 
once you start, I feel like the most useful math class in terms of like translating into regular life is um, geometry that you take in high school because it's all proof based. Ah, it's right. basically yeah, 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 right. you have a statement, a, you know, a theorem, whatever it is, and you've got to prove through other theorems why it's logically correct, which is not that different from a stand up. No, premise no that, that's in what a, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, geometry, geometry was the hardest thing for me. It's, like, it's I, a totally different part of your brain. It's a whole different yeah. kind of math. Yeah, I, yeah. I couldn't, I did very poorly. But like algebra and then into calculus, like it was like, that was my whole thing. Like everything's like, oh, cool. You could just do that. But then when you get into the deeper calculus stuff, it's like, I don't know. Well, it's actually, it's like, it's, oh, yeah. it's like at the edge of it. Like it's kind, it's not at that point. It's like, it's like a taint, you know, it's just like brushes against it's it somehow like kind of stuff oh yeah no it's it's trippy i mean it's like how i was doing a lot of acid at the time too. <laughs> <laughs> i was taking like high end calculus and it's a lot of dead sh- like, a lot of dead shows dude, a lot of acid dude, this makes so much sense <laughs> well see what i was saying <laughs> got a 14 percent on the test it's like no no but i like i understood I all it, it. I, yeah. Yeah, but i get it here okay. i get it in my heart in here dude. <laughs> <laughs> My point about stand up in the equation is like if until you know all the, all the variables, right? Which is like, was it too hot in the room? Right. Were they sat too yeah. spread out? Like you have to know all of those variables to actually understand, like you said, the proof and have different variations of like, oh, I've done this so many times. Right. I could prove this against this. So I feel like that would be something that equates to math. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, but yeah. that would be hard until you did enough stand up to know like, oh, so the guy in front of me just did a ton of shitty crowd work and now this audience doesn't want to see one joke. Like it took me a long time to understand the the feeling and formula of a right. of the setup in the room. But then there's also like you could you could break it down in a way like, okay, how much how much to, of those parameters affect like, is that really, like, overall, is that, a, like, a 30% effect on, you know, if the material is A, yeah, sure. right, and you have, like, you have this, a zero on all the, like, outside, like, you're still, you and you still can do okay, you could still do okay, like, you're, like, you can kind of figure out, like, okay, how much does all of those other parameters, how much do they affect, so it's so much math, I yeah. mean, who... I know it, you just it, write just write punchlines. <laughs> you spend so much time. But I think also with out. all those like kind of elements that you're describing, some of it, all the stuff that happened, what, you know, whatever the lighting, the mm-hmm. your opener, whatever yeah. it is, that is out of your control. But maybe there are things in your control, like like you said, yes. like the person before you does a lot of crowd work. How do okay, fine, I'm going to take that into account. Maybe mm-hmm. that'll affect my act a little bit. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, but but you're right. I mean, like so much of it is it's, just. But just try, you're yeah. figuring all that it's, out. It's, it's fascinating. Like uh, it's like. Unless you can, unless you're really fast, are you like really fast? Can you do math like uh, uh, really quickly? Like uh, arithmetic? Like yeah. nah, not like normal. Make, make change stuff like that. Like nah, you, normal, yeah. uh, not not slow, <laughs> hey, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what if I got a dollar fifty candy bar? I'm handing you uh, twenty bucks. Go Asking ahead. for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking head. I'm making a Slovakia. I'm gonna take you with me. <laughs> I got seven quarters, two dimes, and five nickels in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> can I just take you around with me, like a TI-84? <laughs> <laughs> That's why stand up to me is the hardest art form. I used to know. I knew this guy. He got really famous uh in the early aughts um and uh he he was the most unfunny human you've ever met um uh but he was so analytical about his stand-up yeah and he didn't realize like the he did a he did an impression of his his ethnicity that got him famous he didn't realize that it was people laughing at the impression not that he was doing funny jokes and his whole like i remember when he first like hit it and he was starting to get booked him and i were talking in the back of the comedy store and all he could talk about is uh it was almost like on an like a aspergery level like today is my f- uh 20 uh 23rd hundred show he would mm-hmm. since his open mic he counted every show since uh, his open mic wow and now i have a new super closer he was just like he was really mathematical huh. and formulaic huh. about his stand-up, but not seeing what people were actually laughing at because the jokes still weren't good, but because they were getting laughs, he was using that formula to dictate how he would write future jokes. I just find it hard to believe that someone, it, it sounds like this guy made it, but it, I've, I, 
I well, it went away really quickly. It uh, was like he made it, and then it that makes be, sense because he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, right. Right, you right, got right. for comedy. You've got because you're a funny guy. Like you're, I've talked to you a few times, and you're, and I've seen your act, and you're funny. You're a fun guy. I don't think it. You works. don't come off like this guy did. I don't think it works unless I mean, maybe writers maybe. Like, right, yeah, like sure, that's yeah. what they say about like writers for The Simpsons. Like yeah, those yeah. guys were all very left brain, yeah, you know, yeah, kind of yeah, guys. Right, right, right. But, but for stand up, I stand just up, you gotta it's have too an personal, awareness too about li- yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's too live. It's too much of a live yeah. performance. Because there are guys who are uh, the dumbest guys I've ever met that have rhythm up there. Oh yeah, and instinct, and they destroy. Oh yeah, yeah. these guys they definitely couldn't make change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Could not make change for twenty. <laughs> Some of these guys, I don't know, they find their way home from the club. And that's how fucking stupid they are. <laughs> but I do think, like, I, honestly, I think that sense of humor is the best mm-hmm. measure of intelligence. I mean, because there is no real... I mean, yeah, there's math, science, intelligence. There's, you know, I don't know, other stuff. But it, it's like understanding the world on another dimension. Yeah, you no, know, yeah. Right. yeah that's sarcasm good, or whatever yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. And for people that are just super literal, I mean, it's like... They're kind of more like yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah, know. You're the, right. The yeah. no common sense thing yeah. is because I meet tons of people that are so book smart, yeah. but the common sense part of their life doesn't exist, and it it's inf- it, they come off as the dumbest people I've ever met, and they're the smartest because yeah. the common sense part to me is more important do your day to day than anything to me it's like depth right like it's like they're 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 like a hundred here but like if you look at it from the top it's like it's just it's nothing yes it's right? very it's limited like it's, yeah right like i think the whole thing is like being able to hit it on all yeah 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 things, right. right yeah maybe i shouldn't say intelligence in general because like those guys are you know responsible for every invention and like every you know like very smart things it's so funny how yeah. like narrow minded we are as comedians like, yeah. well if it ain't funny then what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> you're a loser to me yeah. <laughs> you don't have a tight five who are you yeah. Einstein take a fucking yeah. hike fucking boring he equals MC boring <laughs> Jesus what a slog <laughs> So, you've never been fired, really? How did the and how did the like student? How did the student? Is it like a breakup? Cream, how did the ice the cream student? job end? Which sorry, go ahead. How did the ice cream job end? Did you quit? No, I didn't. I, it was like a. I'm complaining. <laughs> that, it was yeah, like yeah. a two month. <laughs> <laughs> It's literally the worst one. job. Worst eight weeks you guys of my don't life. even know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but when a student fires you, does that hurt your feelings? Well, a lot of the times it's the parent. I mean, that's the thing with tutoring is that oh. it's it's really is a triangle relationship yeah. because you got the parent. The parent is bringing in the tutor probably maybe because the material is they don't know it, but also often just to have a third person there. That the, ah, that the parent is like, my, yeah, like my kid doesn't listen to me about this stuff, or at least you know I don't want to deal with this aspect, which is totally fair. Yeah. I mean, so that that's part of why a tutor is there, almost as like a coach or yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had um, a morbidly obese driving instructor. This lady, she drank like she always had in her cup holders two. You know those giant sixty-four ounce big gulps of Coca-Cola, oh, and she wow. would she would clear them Ooh. during the lesson, Ooh. and she would rip hellacious farts. Ooh. One time she farted Loud? no no SBDs, oh, wow. mm. silent but deadlies, and the first time we were I was not a great I'm a good driver now, but like I was my parents never took me out to drive, so the only time I'd ever drive was with this lady. Yeah. So the the third lesson you're supposed to go on the freeway. As we're getting on, like trying to merge, she rips one, and I am like, I don't know if she fucking dazed me, but I almost merge into a car. You know how they have that break? It's like a concussion. She has grenade. that break. It's like somebody just lets up off in the back. You're like, and you just hear that. <laughs> She had her big fat foot. She hit this brake, and I, I fucking. I'm, she was, we had to pull over into an Applebee's parking lot off the exit. She explains it after. She's like, "I'm she, testing you. You got there are a lot of things going. There are a lot of distractions." She didn't say shit. She gets out of the car into the Applebee's. I'm guarantee you, she went in there to drop a deuce. Oh wow! Comes out 40 minutes later. Oh wow! 40 minutes of my lesson, and you got to had the audacity to go. You really got to practice, you know, driving a lot more before you. <laughs> like, what the fuck? 
fuck? <laughs> then another lesson, we get to my house, she uses my bathroom and blows it up. <laughs> what? She came into your house? my house! <laughs> <laughs> she pulled she up to the house. <laughs> you just sit on the side of the freeway, in the car. Like, what are you doing goes, to me? Hurry up, drive to your place. And my parents did not fire her, Ben, because they don't care about me. <laughs> Fucking release this chick. We got to find someone else. Jesus oh my Christ, God. lady. Oh wow. And then she had the. And at the end of the lesson, she looked at me with the most unconvincing face and was like. See you on the road. <laughs> See you on the road. <laughs> like, oh, that's you know, like, because like trying to be like, you're gonna get your license now, but she did not believe oh. I would. <laughs> you could just. She did not sell it. She like no sold the. Uh, the but you know the, that's her catchphrase. <laughs> like that's so funny. I I have certain jokes too that I tell uh, student. The, oh, the go to. It's oh. so it's so fucking lame. Is uh every. <laughs> it's the last session before they take the SAT or ACT and. I'm like, listen, you know, just a few quick reminders, get some good sleep the night before, you know, wake up, wake up early, um, have something to eat. Um, if you drink coffee, drink coffee. If you don't, today's not the day to start. <laughs> I have said like three times in a row. I have, said that. I have said that so many times, more than any bit I've said in my act. I have to say, I appreciate the delivery you just gave us here. That was I, I did a little more of a head shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gave us No, I, I made a scalco did a little bit. But yeah, in general, it's pretty dead bad. That was fantastic. <laughs> I used to work this uh, improv the <laughs> Did I do a little shoulder? You, got a little good sh you had a good shoulder in there. Yeah, it really sells it. Yeah. Sometimes I do like a little, like, yeah. 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 A little Rodney Dangerfield. Uh, I had this like a uh, an acting gig, but it was like part um, scavenger hunt, part improv, and I you play a character on the line of a journey that these people go on to find the ultimate clue that solves the whole thing right and it's improv but mostly the people that run it want you to follow because you have to give them a clue within the context of the end while being funny right right and after a while i was like you know you're doing eight groups of people a day it was like an eight hour day sometimes the first two weeks i was coming up with new shit all the time and after a while i was like this is exhausting yeah because I'm sometimes bombing. Yeah. Because it's not a. It's like no. it's on the. I'm on the corner of Water Street. Yeah. You know, and I'm playing this like guy in glasses and a hat. I'm a spy, and I just started using. I just. Start, I came up with like pinpoint, like marker jokes. Yeah. By the third month, dude, I wanted to kill myself. Because you're saying oh, you're the same, everything. it's just like, it. because yeah. it's like that, it's a timing thing, and when you are when you start to get sick of it, and you're dead inside, yeah. it starts to become like, and then, don't start drinking coffee now, like, yeah, it was like that for yeah. me with these bits, it's hard to do that shit. Yeah, no, that happens with me in stand-up all the it's time, exhausting. where it's exhausting, and the audience knows, oh, you, yeah. do you tell they a joke it. that used yeah. to kill, and then, yeah. you know, fast forward a couple years, and it doesn't work, because they know you're, they could you suck. hate it. Yeah, you, yeah, exactly, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That totally happens. That's so funny. How long? So how long did you do that? I never heard it that. It was good before. money. It was good money. Yeah, I, yeah. So <laughs> best uh, job. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, bro. Actually, actually, I gotta, yeah, actually, I fly, I fly out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mention it. <laughs> so I just got a spy uniform sitting over there. <laughs> I mean, just after this. <laughs> as you're walking out, he puts the door on. <laughs> It's so funny too because I used to do the gig so much, uh, they put people to know so you could pick them out, yeah. and they would give you they would wash them, but you would get a green hat. The whole group would get a green hat, and it was like you got to wear these hats at all times because that's how we know you're part of our crew. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So people would come so, with you, so people could spot so they're not so I could spot them like a homeless so guy I could or spot like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so. After a while, I got to. I was doing it so much, I would be on the subway and see a guy with a green, like the same kind of green hat. And I'm like, "What the fuck? You're so off the mark. You should be, <laughs> you should be a little Italy." <laughs> what are you doing here, buddy? You're so because that would be the. Cause it's like seeing someone with a Cincinnati Reds hat now and thinking it's a Trump hat. <laughs> it's just completely different. Because yeah. the whole job stopped become like it started as a really fun 
gig and a fun way to make money because I would do it and then I would go do spots afterwards. It would lead all the way oh, yeah, up yeah, till yeah. spot time. So yeah. I would make 200, 300 bucks some nights. Especially and then you're kind of warming up. And I'm doing oh, bits. Absolutely. Oh, and I'm yeah, working my improv yeah, muscles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. And I'm acting. I'm in yeah. character. It's fucking great. Yeah. But then as uh, times got a little harder for the theater company, they started to have to move and shift where the locations were. So it really affected the work because now you're turning into a wrangler. You know, now I'm like, where's this group? Because you only, it, it's a rhythm. If, if one group takes too long, mm. now the other group's backed up. Mm. So now if a group comes and I'm doing one group and they see my act, well. it ruins it for that group. Yeah. Mm. So after a while, it's just like, I don't want to, I'm not a head counter. Yeah, it's a lot of moving. Yeah. I don't want to check. And then you're checking people. Sometimes you got to check like some of the, especially if you're like the first actor, they're like, hey, um, can you just make sure you have these names? I'm like, so I'm supposed to be in character and now I'm doing a roll call? Like, there's no fucking way. Yeah. That's not that's, fun. That's yeah. not, you know, but that's the thing. It's like, I, had I made money, money as an actor. That a lot of money. A, that had to be a good money though because you're, you're wearing a, a lot of, I yeah, mean, yeah, it was a, excuse the pun, a lot yeah. of ads. <laughs> <laughs> it was solid. It was better than, it was probably like, um, it was probably $200 a day. Uh-huh. It was good okay. money. Yeah. yeah. But you, you're one of the acting roles, the one I did predominantly was in a restaurant the whole time. So that was awesome. Oh, that sounds And good. you're allowed to drink. Like we, oh. you, It's like a stop for the group to have like a bathroom break uh. and food. So the acting part of it sucked because most of the people are just eating the food while you're trying to do your shit. But you're allowed to sit there the whole day, and, and the other can, actors are outside. And you can riff too. Oh, yeah. yeah. But and you drink some of the wine with yeah, them. It's sure. a you know, and I was really drinking heavily then too, so it was like fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, like it's an acting gig, but not an acting gig. Hey, uh, Jason, it's, yeah, it, yeah, it, it is an. I, yeah. I mean, I made money as an yeah. actor. Sure, you know, sure, it, sure. And I I pulled down for the first three years. I, I made a lot of money, almost as much as stand up. Because I was working every week there, mm-hmm. especially during the good weather, it was like depended upon season. It was seasonal. Then when he said almost as much as stand up, do you think? Oh, I thought you said <laughs> you don't know. I thought, what, you don't know what you, I, yeah. I thought you said it was good money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Twenty thousand a year. <laughs> okay. So you were making money. That's all. I, I was it was the, above. I was, was in, in the, the green. green. In the green. That's <laughs> I was in the black then. <laughs> You're a math major. I'll show you. Yeah, I'm just sitting there nodding. Just like, <laughs> I was like, it's been got to be quicker on this than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Carry the four. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't sound. It's good. <laughs> so you're about to do a special. I am. Yeah. In uh, late April. Late April. Yeah. Do you have a name for it already? I was thinking. No. I was thinking balancing act was the one idea. I have a joke about. Yeah. Carry the two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't even realize that that goes back to it. Uh, I have one joke that, that it's a reference to. So if I can find some way to bring that joke back sure. at the end and have it at the beginning, then that will be the title. Yeah. Uh, if not, I'm not sure. <laughs> Where are you going to shoot it? New York Comedy Club on awesome. uh, 24th. Wow, yeah. Hell yeah. Which one? The Gramercy, 24th okay. and between 2nd and 3rd. So you're going to tell people when it is so they can buy tickets yeah, and absolutely. all that stuff. Uh, so April go, tell them where you're going to be at. Go, like, all your, go ahead and give all your handles and stuff. And Oh, uh, at Ben Kirschenbaum on uh, Instagram and TikTok. Uh, it's a hard name to spell, but I, maybe it's in the <laughs> description. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. I, I just don't have the time <laughs> to yeah, yeah. go through all 12 letters. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, and, and then, yeah, you're a comedy club. If you, if you want to come out, uh, April 28th. It's at five o'clock and seven o'clock. I'm doing two shows, and oh, they can buy great. tickets just by if they follow you. You'll have a link. And yeah, like yeah, and just on the New York Comedy Club website. Amazing. So are they they're producing it? Uh, yeah, it's something called uh, Pinch Records. Yes. Oh yeah, Pinch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, congrats, they're doing dude. the. Uh, yeah. Oh, thanks. I That's appreciate great. it. Um, so they're doing. I, I think their audio stuff, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I'll throw it on YouTube and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. for so sure. It's gonna go straight. Yeah. It's one of those uh, straight to YouTube's, which yeah. is great. Yeah. I mean. If you can get enough comedians that have a big enough following to support it, I mean, it's a good situation. Yeah. Because you just want the views and the minutes and the yeah. to get it played on Sirius and yeah, maybe go sick. number one for the week at on Apple. Whatever. And also, to be honest with you, it's one of those things where just like having a deadline to yeah. try to oh, hone, yeah. you know, however many minutes it's for my, you know, for selfish reasons, it yeah. like has been helpful, you know. Totally. Yeah, that's great. Uh, you can follow me at Josh Ricardo and go to joshricardo.com for tour dates. Uh 
Go ahead, Ed. Follow me on Instagram at EdMcGowanComedy. Follow me at, uh, or check me out at EdMcGowan.com. See any of my show dates. We have an email address. Uh, email us at workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. Uh, tell us about your jobs. Tell us about the show. Tell us about whatever you want. If you are good at math. Send us some notes. <laughs> if you you're know, not, I need more gigs. So yeah, just <laughs> I'll help yeah, you out. You want a list of Cy Young Award winners? <laughs> Hit us up. All right, we'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes, and please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 